Uh, Gareth Ackerman, thank you for your for your time. Um, the chairman of Pick and Pay Group. Uh, it's a fantastic office. I love the view. Marcel, you. you're very privileged. And you're living in Cape Town, so I'm very jealous. Lovely place. <laughs> Lovely place. <laughs> now, let's start at the beginning. I mean, you are, you know, part of, and not like in your blood, not even just as a businessman, of an iconic group. But let me just take you back. What was your first job, um, even if it was a student job? You know, when my father bought Pick and Pay in 1967, um, I was, what, 10 years old? Mm. And I remember on Friday afternoons, he used to pick me up from school and I used to go around stores with him. There were only four little stores in those days. But we, um, and I used to work on the checkouts and I used to work on fruit and veg and I used to work around the stores. But the first proper job I had was, once again, in Pick and Pay when I was about 16. And I was working in our Plumstead store. And the fruit and the fruit and veg manager resigned and walked out overnight. Mm. And the store manager said, "Well, you're it." So yeah. here I had to learn. And fortunately, there were good staff and supervisors, and they taught me how to be a manager and how to run the thing. But it was an amazing experience. Mm. Sixteen. I was sixteen. Can you believe it? And now, just to see the, the a company grow, you, like you said, now four stores to what it is today. Yeah. Um. What What do you What do you think is the secret? What What happened? Where was that That magic that happened in this growth? I think a key thing when you're looking at a business of pick and pay nations, we've gone, as we said, from four stores mm. to 1,400 stores over, and it's now what will be 50 years next year. Mm. And there were a couple of S curves. And, and when one looks at a business and one looks at business strategy as to how do you take yourself from where you are to where you want to go into the future. And I think um, in the Early stages, my father started first have the few stores in Cape Town. First big jump was he went to PE, and then he had a big jump to Johannesburg, and that put was the first S curve. Mm. And then there was a lot of competition in the marketplace in those days between the Checkers and the OK Group and what mm. have you. Um, and there was a lot of threat to the business. So he then put onto a new S curve and opened the first hypermarket, mm. which was in 1975, 76 or thereabouts. And I remember working there. Um, on the opening day, and I was the expert fridge salesman. So I was selling fridges and freezers. I didn't even know how they worked, but I was still selling them. <laughs> but anyway, it was an amazing experience. But that was put pick me on the first S curve. Yes. And then we stayed there for opening hypermarkets, kept opening our supermarkets, mm. until probably the early, the late 80s, early 90s, when we then moved on to the next S curve, when we really started opening our franchise division. Mm. And that gave us a huge new spur of growth. And then now into Africa. And so we're constantly looking for putting on a new S-curve. You are balanced between the, the straightforward business side, but also you oversee the foundations. Um, and the balance between that it must be an amazing privilege to realize you've grown a business that can, that can do and make a difference in people's lives. How do you manage that? Well, I don't directly look after the foundations. Mm. I, I look after the family as a whole. So mm. the family office and investor, the running of the family, of which the foundations are one. Pick and Pay is our largest investment. We have mm. all the number of other investments. So I, I look over, oversee all of that. Um, but you know, you've got to look at what the culture and, mm. of Pick and Pay is. We have three core values around which we've built this business. And mm. everything that works in Pick and Pay works around those three core values. The first one is, the customer is queen. Mm. Look after the customer. Make sure that what we do is we give the best what we can to our customers mm. in terms of stores, product offering, service, whatever. So we're not always perfect, but we try the best. But mm. that's a core value. The second core value is doing good as good business. Business doing good as good business, mm. and doing good and good business business means putting back into the community, giving being part of the community in which people operate, being part of the life of our customers. So we give the equivalent of about 6 or 7% of our after-tax profits mm. as a company every year um, to causes. Mm. So it's everything from developing small businesses right the way through to straight looking after people who've, who've got nothing mm. and everything in between. So it's everything from supporting the cycle to, to um, breast cancer awareness to our schools clubs, where we're actually mm. supporting schools. It's all part of our giving back to society. And then the third one value is the value of business efficiency. Mm. Because you cannot be good to your customers and 
look after the communities unless you're running a really efficient business and making mm. profits. Mm. Because if a business doesn't make profit, it can't look after the, the, the other side of it. Mm. So we have to be, we are unashamedly a profit maker, mm. but we try and manage our profits to make sure that we are putting back into society as well. Mm. And therefore the family fits into that context as well. So we take, as a family, a fair portion of our dividend that we get every year from Pick and Pay, and we then allocate it within the family to the causes that we wanted to go to. And Pick and Pay has given us money for a foundation, and we have a Pick and Pay Found Ackerman Pick and Pay Foundation, which is run by my sister Suzanne, mm. who runs it for the Pick and Pay group, doing what Pick and Pay wants to do. 